The Panama Hotel was once the heart of Seattle's Nihonmachi, Japantown. It was a typical hotel of that era, a working man's hotel upstairs, the tailor, a dentist, pool hall, that kind of thing on the street level. And like most Japanese-owned hotels of that era, it also had a marble Sinto bath, a communal bathing area separated for men and women. Unfortunately, and tragically, when the entire population of Nihonmachi was taken away in 1942, it too was forced into closure and boarded up for the duration of the war. Internees were allowed to bring only what they could carry, so most families were forced to sell their homes, businesses and belongings, had pennies on the dollar, or store their possessions with friends in the basements of churches and other buildings, the Panama Hotel being one of those places. And those belongings remained there unclaimed and virtually untouched for 40 years. The Panama seemed like a natural place to continue that narrative, to tell the story of those belongings in the basement and who their owners were. Canton Alley and Maynard Alley were filled with apartments at the time. This is where I pictured Henry and his family living in a brick alley apartment overlooking some storefront. It's also the type of back alley, like this one, where I envisioned the scene where Henry and Keiko are hanging out behind the Black Elks Club when Oscar Holden first wanders out to take a smoke. The Wami Club was actually a backroom gambling parlor in the place where my grandparents met. My grandfather was a blackjack dealer and my grandmother was a coat check girl. The club was operational all the way until the mid-80s when it came to a terribly tragic end. I think a lot of people that grew up in the Seattle area like I did just assume that places like Chinatown spring up organically. Back before World War II, it was often illegal to sell property to minorities outside of designated areas. So the result was that these segregated communities emerged Japantown and Chinatown right next to each other, with South Jackson running down the middle. Jackson Street in its heyday was the beating heart of Seattle's jazz scene. The book touches upon Seattle in the 40s, when despite the war and rationing, there was this enormous economic boom in Seattle. At night, it was where people came to cut loose. At its peak, there were 38 jazz clubs on this one street. The Nippon Kan Theater, or Japanese Hall, was built in 1909 and quickly became the cultural center of Nihonmachi. It was home to traditional kabuki theater, as well as movies, concerts, judo and kendo demonstrations, as well as community meetings. The Changhua Association was established in 1915 to give a unified voice to Washington's Chinese communities. They helped mediate disputes between families and rival Tongs, and also assisted in helping Chinese immigrants become American citizens. Plus, they still run a Chinese language school, the type of school that most of the kids Henry's age growing up attended. Bing Kung is a Tong, which was a type of organization formed by early Chinese immigrants. Through the turn of the century, the Tongs operated as secret societies, providing assistance and protection to its members. In Hotel, Henry's father is a prominent Bing Kung member and also a member of the Changhua Association. Filial piety, or respect for one's elders, is an aspect of Confucianism. That reverence for family members, especially for one highly regarded in the Bing Kung Association, plays a big role in the book and is obviously a source of emotional conflict for Henry. The Chinagate restaurant was where we always went for big Chinese dinners. Even as a kid, I always admired the Chinagate's funky architecture, but what I didn't know at the time was that it originally was built in 1924 as a Chinese opera house, which later was turned into a jazz club. The Mon He is this tiny shoebox of a bakery, but they have the best mooncakes, and you have to eat them warm. When I was riding Hotel, I envisioned an older Henry and his wife Ethel in their prime, strolling down here arm in arm, waiting for seasonal mooncakes to come out of the oven. The Higa was opened in the 1900s, and remains as one of the last Japanese-owned businesses from the pre-World War II era. These days, the economic and cultural hub of Seattle's International District is the Wajimaya. Like the Higo Variety Store 60 years ago, it's where everyone goes. In my book, this is where Henry's son's fiance takes him to stock up for this great Chinese dinner she's planning to cook. She makes black bean crab and choice some with oyster sauce, which are two of my favorite dishes. To the west of Chinatown is Pioneer Square, which is where Bud's Jazz Records was. That's where Henry takes Ethel on one of their first dates. It's also probably where Sheldon would go to play street corners. Bud's Jazz Records had been around for nearly three decades, occupying this basement space downtown near Pioneer Square. In the book, since young Henry was such a fan of Oscar Holden and then the whole West Coast jazz scene, it only seemed natural that the older version of Henry would come to Bud's to get away from his troubles and to haunt the dusty record bins for a long lost recording. The first Japanese Americans to be taken to internment camps were from Bainbridge Island, just across the water from Seattle. So on the morning of March 30, 1942, soldiers escorted 227 men, women, and children to the Eagle Dale Ferry Crossing, where they sailed to Seattle. Once they arrived, they traveled on foot, suitcases in hand, to the train station where they embarked on the three-day journey to Camp Manzanar in the Mojave Desert. Union Station was the staging area for the massive evacuation of Nihonmachi, where Japanese families would be taken by Pullman car or by bus to Camp Harmony, the temporary relocation center south of Seattle. 
This is where Henry is fighting his way through the crowds of people, hecklers, curious onlookers, and groups of families trying to keep track of one another. It's here that he finds Keiko and her family and gives her his I am Chinese button, pleading for her to stay. When I first came here, when I was doing my research, it was amazing to imagine this place filled the capacity of the families and their belongings and soldiers, herding them onto waiting trains bound for places unknown. Camp Harmony was the unofficial name of the Puyallup Assembly Center, a temporary internment camp set up at the Puyallup Fairgrounds, about 35 miles south of Seattle. More than 7,000 people were forced onto what was basically a 40-acre parking lot. Makeshift housing included the use of livestock pavilions, the cattle barns, as well as scores of box-like buildings that were hastily constructed. And to make matters worse, there was no plumbing. And keep in mind, the residents weren't all strapping young men. There were older people, pregnant women, babies, and toddlers. Then from here, they were sent to Camp Minidoka, permanent facilities that would house them for the next three years. Dinsho is the Japanese-American legacy project dedicated to preserving the memory and the history of the Japanese internment, especially through recorded interviews, because this whole generation that was affected firsthand are now getting older, and sadly, passing away. Lakeview Cemetery has a gorgeous view of Lake Washington, and it's the final resting place of Chief Seattle's daughter, the Native American founder of Seattle. It's also home to the Nisei War Memorial Monument, dedicated to Japanese-American veterans. In Hotel, this is where Henry pays his respects to his late wife, Ethel, who's died of lung cancer. And yes, this is where my own grandparents are buried, and my grandmother's name was Ethel. Mm -hmm.